happening YouTube. Eric Bauer, back again. First video of the new year. And at that note, on that note, happy fucking new year, YouTube. Viewers, friends, That's what we're listening to right now. The Mob. This is some excellent UK anarcho-punk, which is hard to find. It's out of print. And this was uh, some VCLT from Ground Zero Salem. Mr. Pat. A while back. And that's that's what we're rocking right now. I hope it's not too loud. Uh, I'm gonna try and talk over it. And uh, before I do anything else, drinking some beer. Cheers. Fucking fantastic local brew. Is it local? Actually, I don't even know if it's local. <laughs> uh, let's see. Silver City. I should know. Mm. Bremerton, Washington. It is, in fact, local. I fucking harp about that shit constantly and I don't know if the beer I'm drinking is local or not. Sad. Anyway, enough of my um, aimless rambling. I just got home. Uh, worked today. Went and picked up my wife from uh, her job. We went out for uh, some dinner. Stopped at the store. Came home and I was like, you know what? I'm going to do a YouTube video while it's on my mind. Um, so as YouTube viewers, I assume you've all noticed the influx of videos pertaining to the best of 2019. And that's not what this video is. <laughs> I said it in the last video, I'm not going to do a best of 2019 list. If you want to know what albums from 2019 I liked, listen to the podcast. Um... Had a really good time doing the most recent episode. Went through a bunch of shit. Uh, something for everybody on there, I think. This might be a little loud. Uh, but it's so good. fucking love it <laughs> anyway back to the rant yeah listen to the podcast uh, there, there's something for everybody i think um i tried to tailor it that way um and it runs through the shit from 2019 that i fucking dug um i will probably be talking about some underlooked shit from 2019 that uh didn't necessarily make my my best of list um but really good releases that have been criminally under-mentioned, uh, if mentioned at all, in the VC. Uh, so we'll see about that in the upcoming weeks. This video, here, right now, today, tonight, this video is, uh, rather than my favorite releases from 2019, I'm going to talk about some of my favorite fucking pickups from 2019. Um, and this was, I don't know, it was a little daunting. Uh, putting it together because I've worked a lot on filling holes and grabbing grails and essentials this year. Um, I feel like I've wasted a lot of time and money in previous years trying to keep up with what's new, trying to stay current. And it's funny, I go back to some of those stuff that some of those albums that I was fucking touting three, four years ago and a lot of them, just most of them, not even, not even a lot, most, 80 to 90% of them don't hold up. They don't have the staying power 
of um, something like <laughs> trying to think of what year it was. I want to say it was 2015. Uh, fucking the My Dying Bride record, uh, which. <laughs> feel the misery. I go back to that album a lot still, and I kind of have to give credit to My Dying Bride. It's their pedigree that does it. A sophomore band, I don't think would have released an album that catchy, that somber, that epic, that downtrodden, um, and re-listenable as My Dying Bride. My Dying Bride's had their fair share of missteps, don't get me wrong, but that's probably my favorite material of theirs since Turn Loose the Swans or As the Flower Withers. Um, but other than that, a lot of the shit, like I said, 80 to 90% of the shit that I've mentioned in previous best of year end lists um, just doesn't have the staying power. So, long story short, I've been filling gaps and I'm going to show you uh, a bunch of shit that I bought in 2019. Um, that I, and this isn't everything I bought in 2019. This would be the longest video ever. Um, well, not ever, but it'd be a long fucking video. Probably the longest one I've ever done. Um, but yeah, I pulled a stack um, of just shit that I'm super stoked to have snagged uh, this past year. And I know we're into 2020, and I know 2020 is off to a rough start for a lot of people. Um, and it's not looking like it's getting any better anytime soon. So. Uh, you know, I have a good time. Fucking crack a beer, crack a, crack a Pepsi. Oh, start a, start a, start up a tea, you know, steep some tea, or have a late night cup of, cup of Java, um, and enjoy. We're gonna go ahead and fucking get started. In just a second. Pulling a metal theologian there. One more. Hang on, this is pretty funny. Oh, snaps, I missed it. Where's my wattage? Anyway, vape shit aside, that's one of my plans for 2020 is quit that shit. All right, we're gonna jump right into it. Start with some tapes. So here's one that I've been hyped on since I grabbed it. And I grabbed it earlier this year. Um, I don't know, probably around March, April. Um, and it's something I've been wanting to snag. Um, and I've been looking out for in the wild for a long fucking time. Um, and it's not something you come across very often uh, at a brick and mortar shop, so. I had to bite the bullet. I went the Discogs route. I'm talking about the dictators with fuck them if they can't take a joke. Uh, this is a live album, as the uh, J card indicates. Dictators Live. This was released by ROIR on a red shell in the year of. 1981 got some excellent liner notes look at the title the spirit of wrestling and <laughs> compares the punk rock swagger of the dictators to professional wrestling it's pr pretty much perfectly written it's, and it's an amazing an amazing album uh, probably one of the best live sets ever. You got every song by the Dictators that's good on here. Next Big Thing, fucking Rock and Roll Made a Man Out of Me, Two Tub Man. If you don't know who the Dictators are, I'm sorry. You, you should. Um, just excellent garage punk, fucking proto punk from uh, the East Coast. Um, their album Blood Brothers, uh, which is my favorite. Uh, has a track that is pretty much blatantly ripped off by fucking Danzig on Danzig 1. Um, Minnesota Strip song fucking rules. That's on here too. Uh, you got Ross the Boss on, on the mic. 
a lot of banter. So the banter is some of the best I've heard on a live record on this. And uh, Ross the Boss has no lack of personality. If you don't know who Ross the Boss is, fucking Man of War. That's all that I really need to say about that. Anyway, Dictators, fucking awesome pickup, super hyped. I don't know where to put these when I'm done. Just stack them right there. Next is a twofer. The hard-ons. Got Dick Cheese. And then we've got Love is a Battlefield of Wounded Hearts. These were both put out by Tang. And if you're not familiar with the Hard-Ons, legendary punk band from Australia. Um, weird band. Uh, I'd be remiss, well, I don't know if I'd be remiss, but I'd be inaccurate if I said that their sound wasn't similar to uh, pop punk, uh, but they also have some like speed metal, thrash metal leanings, um, some very metallic, Guitar riffage, just razor sharp. Melodic as fuck. Poppy, um, but not in like a goofy, sort of like MTV pop punk way. This was, these came out in fucking like 82, 83, 84, somewhere around there. Uh, Tang's fucking tape releases are pretty bare bones. So of course, they don't say. Um, at any rate, Dictators, legendary. Essential Australian punk rock. Uh, they did a collab with Henry Rollins uh, where they cover uh, fucking... Um, oh, God. Um, at a loss. They cover an ACDC track. Um, it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll, I believe. Um great cover uh, there's a video for it on youtube i might even link that below i know i've been pretty fucking lax on the links the last many videos i put up so uh, we'll see if i correct that maybe i won't i don't know look it up yourself you've got a keyboard in front of you probably um do your own research <laughs> just enjoy what i have to say hard on awesome essential there's another one. I'm just going through the tapes. Or do you want to see some vinyl? Here, I'll, I'll show you some fucking vinyl. How about that? Some 12 inches here. Got Excel. With fucking split image. Original pressing on uh, Caroline Suicidal Records. Suicidal Records, of course, is a record label owned by Mike Muir. Suicidal Tendencies. Um, this came out in uh, 87. I've been after this uh, for a while. Uh, I really wanted it on tape. In fact, I snagged a tape copy, um, I, I want to say late last year, and it broke, which is you know one of the risks you take with tapes. Uh, so I ended up finding this uh, for a pretty good cost because it's kind of partied on. You can't really tell because of the colors one of the things I really dig about this is that fucking cover painting is just sick. I love this guy's work, whether it's, he did the cover art to this, he did the uh, cover artwork for the first Beowulf, uh, he did the cover art for the No Mercy Widespread Bloodshed album, uh, Suicidals Join the Army, uh, just a fucking awesome, awesome painter. Um, Dig it. Excel. Venice. Thrash. SoCal. Awesome shit. That's about all I'm going to say about that. What else we got? Here's one. It's a good one. This was actually a birthday present from the wife. Onslaughts. Power from Hell. Under One Flag Press. Uh, it is not... The Children of the Revolution pressing or the Pussmort pressing, which would have been fucking hella cool, but um, those are even 
more inaccessible than this under one flag version. Um, I'm just happy to have it on a version that's not a boot or a back on black edition. Get the under one flag, inner, unmistakable. And what can I say about Onslaught? Um, Power from Hell, Legendary. Uh, a lot of people cite The Force as being a better record, but uh, I disagree. Um, we've got the inner sleeve printed, inner sleeve. Don't keep the record in here because uh, I don't want split, seam splits. Um, essential, fucking, it kind of toes the line of like crust, DB, and thrash, um, and death metal in that way that Possessed towed the line of thrash and death metal. Um, Onslaught started off as a DB driven crust band um, and they kind of progressed to do this and then they put out the force which is a completely different animal to this. Um, for my money though this is the penultimate Onslaught, Power From Hell, Death Metal. Fucking outstanding. And here's another one that's gifted to me by my wife for my birthday. Yeah, I'm spoiled. Overkill, taking over. Uh, the best Overkill record ever released. That controversial opinion. I don't know. It's, I think it's true. You can't deny this album. It starts off with Deny the Cross, which is probably one of the most perfect thrash songs ever written. Um, this, this is a top top five thrash album for me, probably. Everything on here is just fucking perfect. It's, it's raw. It's fucking blasphemous. It's sleazy as fuck. It's it's awesome. And look, that cover art. I mean, it's it's absurd. But it's fucking iconic. I love this shit. Um, and it's just fucking thrilled to get it. I got the noise version, so you got the uh, noise records printed in her sleeve. Again, record's not in there. Uh, I don't know what else I can say about this album without just sounding like I'm babbling. Uh, it's perfect. And if you don't have it, you need it in your life. Uh, it's been repressed. Not hard to find, but this one, not so much. Talk about more tapes. I got more shit. Here we go. Cloven Hoof. With a self-titled on fucking meat. satanic new wave of British heavy metal and uh, probably my favorite Nuwabim record ever it's up there with fucking Wildcat Tigers of Pantang this shit this is an elusive find right here not common hard as fuck to come by I managed to to find a copy and I snagged it for next to nothing. Um, so I'm super hyped about this. Uh, easily one of my favorite cassettes in the collection. Just awesome. Uh, let's see, some death metal? Okay. Disgorge, Chronic Corpora Infest. And a lot of people will cite Forensic as being the best thing Disgorge had to offer. It's a great fucking record. Um, but for my money, this is this is better. Uh, this is an OG on, uh, I think it's Pathos Productions. Um, this is another tape that is not something that you're gonna come by, come across frequently and this is probably one of my favorite death metal releases ever 
grindcore releases, death grind, I don't know, gore grind. This shit is just demented, deranged, brutally violent records you'll ever you'll ever probably come across. Um, and this version, the CD version is pretty easy to find. I think it's been bootlegged a lot. And I've got a copy of that too. Um, the vinyl version is harder to find, but um, it was released by American Line, I think. And I, I've never been super impressed with their vinyl quality. Um, but this, this tape edition just fucking smokes. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Dropping my shit. God. Genius. Here's another one. Uh, I don't know if I've showed this before. Uh, excruciate fucking uh, mutilation of the past demo. And uh, <laughs> excruciate fantastic Swedish death metal. Um, you know, you could throw out the typical comparisons to Entombed or Dismember. Uh, but I don't honestly get that as much. I think Excruciate kind of cultivated their own sound um, and did a damn good job of it. Uh, I mean, you'll hear echoes to that sweet F sound, but this, this album, this demo, uh, is fantastic. And it's a real good glimpse of uh, what they would go on to do with their split with Epitaph and uh, their full-length um, Passage of Life. Fucking just phenomenal. Super pleased to have that. I found that in the wild. Somehow. For cheap as fuck. Um, and I'm not going to quote prices what I paid for the shit uh, on here. It doesn't matter. Um, but that record was a steal. Um, okay. Let's talk about some fucking... Uh, some more records. Judas Priest. Sad Wings of Destiny. Not seven reasons. <laughs> wow. Stained class. <laughs> this is the best Judas Priest record. Right here. This is Sad Wings. Um, but I lean more towards this. This is a white label promo. Um, so, I mean, this record itself, not that uncommon. You find it on CD everywhere. Uh, LP's constantly impressed um, by somebody or another. Uh, you know, printed in her here. You got, for the radio stations, track listing on the front with timestamps, gold stamp. And I'm not really a huge sucker for these promos. Uh, they're cool, uh, but I don't seek them out. You get the white label, Columbia Records. Um, and that white label on Columbia Records, you'll only see with their promos. Um, I mean, so much has been said about staying class. It, you know, I'd be hard pressed to say anything new or different about the record. Uh, it's just fantastic. It's it's just somber, um, melodic, catchy, classic heavy metal. Um, this era of Priest and like Scorpions from the same era just, I love that shit. Fucking can't get enough of it. We also snagged this uh, Sortilegia Metamorphosis uh, Japanese press. So you got the Obi, which uh, it's a nice touch. There's a band. This is not the best album that Sortilegia ever did. Their first EP is where it's at. I'm still on the lookout for that one, but this album is a fucking ripper, man. Um, nothing wrong with it at all. You got the Japanese label there. Uh, no insert. Just amazing French speed metal. Uh, progressive to a degree. Uh, you know, if, if you're not familiar with Sorlegia, uh, they're often cited as one of uh, Chuck's uh, biggest influences uh, when it came to death and their latter stuff. Um, this album just fucking smokes. It's, it's so good. 
Um, and this is this is this is a weird version. It's a Japanese press um, of the English language version of this album. There was, there was simultaneously they released a French language version, uh, which I want to say came out in like Canada. Uh, by Bonsai uh, released it, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I don't remember if it came out in America, the English version, English language version. I I'm not sure, but this album just start to finish. It's, it, it, it just rips. In that same vein, got a couple more tapes. And these are albums that I've been looking for on vinyl for a long time for a good price. Uh, and they don't come out very often. So uh, they got repressed on, on tape and I had to jump at it. Uh, talking about ADX with Execution, more French speed metal, just essential. It's in the same vein as Sword of Legia. This album, uh, probably a little bit rawer than the Sword of Legia, not quite as technical. Uh, but she's still ripping. Um, this was released by fucking uh, Jesus. Uh, Warlord Trinity Productions in 2017. Just fucking smokes. So good. So happy to have it on at least one some format, some analog format. Awesome. And then we got this one, which uh, was a fairly recent, recent repress, um, 2018. Uh, Blasphemé with uh, Desir de Vampire. More French speed metal and excellent stuff as well. Nice silver shell on the tape. J card. Um, this is probably a little bit more of a mature outing than the ADX. Uh, kind of more in line with that Sortilegia. It's not Sortilegia, it's Sortilege. Have I been saying Sortilegia this whole time? Confusing a French speed metal band with an Icelandic black metal band? Canadian black metal band? No, Sortilege. This is probably more in line with that than the ADX is, but all from the same school of French speed metal. Shit fucking smokes all day. Love it. Uh, from that same region, got another piece of wax for you. We got this Ostrogoth, Full Moon's Eyes. Probably one of the best EPs ever released. Heavy metal EPs ever. Just love this fucking album. Beware of the Full Moon. Released by Mausoleum Records. Belgian label. Belgian band. Um, this band, this EP specifically, uh, it's just fucking killer. Uh, the title track, Full Moon's Eyes, it's worth the price of admission. Uh, Heroes Museum, excellent. Fucking Paris by Night, killer. Rock Fever, also killer. Um, the follow-up full length, a pretty good album. Not quite as mandatory as this EP. Um, they put out another LP after that, which was pretty okay. Uh, and then they continued releasing a few more records almost after that, which were all kind of ho-hum, mediocre, especially when compared to their legacy started with this record here. Just fucking amazing. Okay, I got more shit and I'm at the 30 minute mark. This is going to be a long video. I'm sorry. Uh, I need another drink. I'm parched. Got more. Not a ton more, but I got more. It's another repress. Cat. This album. Which I'm not going to try and pronounce. Uh, fucking Polish thrash. This is a repress on uh, Metal Mind. Who I was a little bit wary of. Um, this, this repress did not pop up in any U.S. distros. Um, so I had to order directly from Metal Mind. Um, and it took a while to get here. Um, but it was absolutely worth the wait. This album is incredible. Uh, Cat, 
started off as like a proto black metal, kind of in the same vein as like Venom, uh, Tor, um, that type of style, uh, NME. Um, and then they kind of took a weird turn um, with this album. This is, I want to say, if it's not their second LP, it's their third. Um, this is super like technical, almost cyber thrash metal. Um, it has a very unique sound to it that uh, was not happening a lot when it came out, which was like 87? The original date for this album is not on here, but I want to say it's like somewhere between 86 and 88. So I'm going to say 87. Um, it definitely has some nods to like some of the Bay Area shit that was happening around that time, like uh, Forbidden, Heathen, that type of stuff. It's just fucking another essential thrash LP. Uh, look it up. Cat. It's fucking just phenomenal. Running out of LPs here. Carcass. Tools of the Trade EP. Just phenomenal. I'm not going to say a lot about this. Uh, I, it is cool. It's got the hype sticker for the uh, original Gods of Grind tour with Entombed Carcass Cathedral and Confessor, uh, released by Earache Records. Fucking just essential uh, pre heartwork carcass. This is the. Um, EP that bridged the gap between necroticism and heart work. Um, so you can definitely hear where they're going on this, the direction that they're headed. Um, but it's not just that full out um, melodic death metal assault of heart work, which I still think is a good album. Um, it's definitely not my favorite Carcass record, but um, Tools of Trade, that shit rules. And here we go. This is. Uh, goes back and forth between being my first, either my first, my favorite thrash record or my second favorite thrash record of all time. And I'm talking about Sepultura, Schizophrenia. This is the uh, Shark Records Press. I was so hyped to find this um, at the price I found it for it was just ridiculous considering the condition. There's, there's a seam split up at the top, yeah, whatever. It's barely there, it's maybe an inch. Uh, but the corners is still sharp, which fucking rules. Um, now, this was an OG Shark Records, was a label out of Germany, so this was the German pressing. Um, this is not quite as uh, loaded as the Cogamello uh, edition. Um, no gatefold, which is unfortunate, but, you know, is what it is. You got the Shark Records inner label, um, which was pretty consistent, I think, between all the releases that Shark put out back in the day. Uh, let's see here. Fucking struggle bus here. I don't know why I put this in here. Paper sleeve. <laughs> Ridiculous. Anyway, album's essential. Um, it's up there. So the, the two most perfect thrash records ever released, in my opinion, are this <coughs> and Creator's Pleasure to Kill. Um, and like I said, I go back and forth um, on that. I love Pleasure to Kill. I have multiple versions of Pleasure to Kill, uh, multiple formats. Um, and this album's no different. Uh, I've got a uh, repress, got a CD, tape, uh, but I wanted a, an OG and uh, I found one, so I snagged it. And I'm hyped. Speaking of South American shit, here's another one I was super stoked to find in the wild. Now this is a nuclear we're now repressing of the Impurity demo. I flashed this, um, I think in my live stream that I did a while back, maybe like a month ago. Um, Impurity, another Brazilian band, 
just killer black metal thrash, black thrash. Um, there's Gatefold 45. Fucking. It's kind of. Kind of stuffed in, uh, to the gills in here. Got uh, Nuclear War Now ad. This is old, man. You've got the ad for Asunder Procreation in here. Um, that Procreation stuff is killer, too. <laughs> if you ever heard that, you should check it out also. And of course, you've got Lyric Sheet. And see if I can get it out. I don't know. I don't think it's much special to look at, but shoved in there pretty tight. One of the thickest 45s I own. Look at those guys. Fucking heathens, man. Anyway, yeah. I was hyped as hell when I found this in the wild um, at my spot. Uh, which I've name dropped on here many, many times over. Um, so go back maybe to my last video and see the shirt I was wearing. You'll know where you can find crazy fucking metal shit that you would never expect to find at a brick and mortar spot. Uh, they got it all there. Anyway, yeah, killer. Killer, killer. <laughs> Repackaging shit on camera. Faux pas, right? Um, I don't have much left, so we're just going to burn through it. Super hyped to find these two. I collect shit by fucking Black Flag and did not have the Louie Louie 45 or the Six Pack 45. Um, SST, you got uh, Dez on vocals on both of these, uh, backed by Jin Chuck Dukowski. Uh, otherwise known as Chuck Biscuits um, and fucking Robo on drums uh, and that is the same lineup on uh, this one fucking essential I'm not gonna say much more about flag because y'all ought to know here's another one I was super <laughs> fucking over the moon to find um, and I'm talking about uh, the veins Fucking, this is a, uh, it's a boot, or it's a fan club edition. It's a fucking nice boot. Um, if you're not familiar with the Veins, uh, they were a Seattle area punk band from, fuck, when this come out, like, 80, 1980, and originally on No Threes Records uh, from Seattle, Washington. And uh, there was a very young Duff McKagan, in this band. Uh, he would go on to be in The Farts and then uh, 10 Minute Warning before moving down to Hollywood and joining Guns N' Roses. Um, and there's material on here that he wrote, which he then carried over and, and used some of the hooks uh, for Guns N' Roses tracks. And if you're listening carefully enough, you'll catch it. Uh, the original press of this is extremely hard to come by and expensive as fuck um this fan club edition was out of 250 i got 246 um and this was just at one of my local shops it was at uh, one of the longest standing brick and mortar shops in the seattle area uh, one of the stores from my younger days uh was still up and running love going in there and supporting that dude um and this was on the New Arrival Shelf, along with a bunch of shit from Splatter Records, which um, I showed in that same live stream that uh, I was talking about a little bit earlier, I think. Uh, at least one of the most recent live streams I did, um, which I don't think I saved or uploaded back to YouTube. But anyway, if you missed it, you missed it. Um, this shit, though, the veins, look it up. It's awesome. Here's another one that I was super hyped about finding because this is a band you don't see in the wild too often. Uh, legendary, Finnish Hardcore, Turvy Cadet. Uh, this is a compilation of um, two of their EPs. 
Oma Coloni and Anno Domini. Um, you've got tracks from the first EP and tracks from the second EP there. Um, and it's essential stuff. Uh, considering how hard it is to find those two, um, finding this comp uh, was fucking just a killer surprise. Um, it's on white vinyl. They're really into the whole like BDSM thing back in the early 80s, um, which is weird because like it's kind of like the whole motif that like the Sex Pistols went for in some of their EPs and um, rougher releases that weren't uh, never mind the bollocks. Um, but Turvy Cadets just fucking blistering, savage Finnish hardcore, borders on D bait, raw punk at times, just killer essential super happy to have it i don't have a lot of turvy cadet in the collection because it's hard to come by i had a bunch of it back in the day um lost my collection 01 and was hard pressed to rebuy a lot of that stuff because it goes for collector scum prices these days um that's one of the reasons why this has been so elusive but i finally stumbled across it those kudos with fucking Las Injustias, Las Injusticias, saying Como Pesadillas. I don't know how my Spanish was there. Hopefully it was decent. Uh, I used to be able to speak conversational Spanish. A little known fact about me. Uh, Crudos, essential, hardcore. I want to say they're from the Midwest, like Chicago area. Yeah, lyrics. Super politically active, Antifa, and I know that that's a buzzword for a lot of people these days, but um, for me, I mean, this, this is the shit I grew up on. Um, this is awesome. This insert, like one of a kind, it's a pop up here. But Kudos currently is no more. Um, they've got members that went on to be involved in like Limp Wrist, who are also killer. Uh, queer Core, just awesome hardcore. And this is awesome hardcore. Uh, I would say essential hardcore for sure. Just without Kudos, you know, you, know, you could argue that at least American hardcore would have progressed totally differently um, without the blueprint crudos laid down whether it was their politics their diy ethic their touring uh it was insane just a killer band then we found these are the two last things here one of my most sought after 45s ever um, and this was a recent find like i want to say early december just close a mass of raw sound assault just close stuff is another one of those bands that goes for collector's come prices a lot of the times that you encounter it. Um, and this is something you don't see in the wild, basically ever. Uh, you'll think you're seeing a Disclose record and it turns out it's a Besthoven record. And Besthoven rules, but no Disclose. Um, some of the best material Disclose ever did. Just savage feral raw punk d beat from japan my favorite all-time japanese hardcore band uh next to the like, gizm or um fucking uh, gauze uh just incredible this finding this the day i found it, it fucking just it made my day just amazing and then probably I'm, Probably my favorite LP that I, I picked up in Snag uh, over 2019. And this is the last thing I got to show at almost 45 minutes. I'm sorry this has gone so long. Usually I'm pretty good at keeping these down around 20 minutes to a half hour as of late. So what are you going to do? Talking about the Stalin, the Stop Jab. And 
this record, original press of this record, unless you're in Japan, this shit, you're not going to come across this in the States, in an OG. Uh, not at a price that's at all affordable. Uh, and if you do, you're, you're lucky. So you buy that shit. Uh, this is a reissue that came out in uh, 2016, um, which I had no idea existed. And this has been on my Discogs want list for so long, an original press of this. Um, and I just kind of given up on it. And I was farting around on like Amazon Japan. Uh, one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that if you have an American Amazon.com account, that means that you also have an Amazon account for Japan, for the UK, for France, for Germany. Basically anywhere with an Amazon, um, you can use your Amazon.com login to log into and you can order from them. And shipping prices, the international shipping prices, while they're not prime prices, cheaper than fucking discogs all the time anyway long story short i was browsing amazon japan and i don't remember what i was looking at i was looking for the movie burst city um which is a crazy japanese sci-fi movie from the early 80s that features a bunch of japanese punk bands and one of those bands is a stalin um and it's got a really insane live performance from the stalin um it's very like Mad Max, Road Warrior-ish. It's, it's a crazy fucking movie, but it's, it's awesome. At any rate, this came up in my recommended uh, feed. And um, I fucking bought it. Like that. I was in my cart and I was checking out. Um, and shit from Amazon Japan, at least if you're in my state, this side of the country, shows up quick. Like, I ordered this on a Thursday, and it was at my door the following Monday. Um, and this album, it's essential. Um, a lot of people would say that it's probably the best thing that Stalin ever did. I would I would probably agree with that, but the follow-up is no slouch either. Um, fantastic, fucking just amazing shit. It's up there with, like, lip cream comes and the execute in terms of like those essential Japanese recordings that are like impossible to find these days unless it's just fan club boots or, or whatnot and this is a legit boot or not boot but a legit repress on uh, wax records out of Japan um, and I love that they took the time to put an obi in here because it's keeping it's in keeping with the original aesthetic of the record that's Stop Jet from Stalin. One of the best hardcore albums ever released. And on that note, that is all of my favorite shit that I picked up in 2019. I'm at 48 minutes, <laughs> which is insane. Uh, and if you stuck with me, I fucking appreciate it. Thank you for keeping this channel going, for continuing to interact with me on here, uh, and to have back and forth and conversations about the music that I love and I love to talk about and I love to show on this channel. Um, and keep in tune uh, with the podcast. Um, keep up with that because I, I do a lot of stuff on there that I'm not gonna really dive into on this channel and it's stuff that I'm stoked about as well. So on that note, YouTube, <coughs> I hope you all have a great 2020. And if you're one of those many this 2020 started out shitty. I hope it gets better. And I hope to continue seeing you guys watch and uh, engage me in uh, the dialogue that I love regarding this type of shit. Anyway, keep it real, YouTube. Peace out.